Hello, my name is Leontine Talbom and I'm currently a third year PhD student on a collaborative project with University College London and the National Archives. Um, so before I go into any details on my PhD project, I just wanted to briefly talk about my background. Um, so I have a mixed background in archaeology and computer science and during my bachelor um, I worked as a data manager on an archaeological project and um, I was able to strengthen my computational skills during my master in digital archaeology where I did research in natural language processing and was able to enhance the discovery of archaeological records. After completing this master, I worked as a digital archivist at the Archaeology Data Service. So my PhD project is a continuation of this, so that kind of mix between computer science and humanities. And I am currently looking at the constraints that digital preservation practitioners face when making born digital material accessible. By uh, digital preservation practitioners, I mainly mean archivists, um, are, and, but it also includes other people who look after um, and preserve digital material. So also think of librarians or other information specialists. To understand these constraints in more detail, I have been interviewing digital preservation practitioners and I've come to some interesting insights. So currently, most of this material is accessed through a catalogue um, and you can see an example of this on the left. This is the discovery catalogue of the National Archives, but more and more archives and other uh, institutions have been looking into the possibility of making this material available as data. So on the right hand side, you can see the, a screenshot of the main homepage from the API that the Wellcome Trust hosts. And this uh, currently is, is my main interest. So is there a way of making this material available as data and therefore making it available for more computational methods? Um, luckily, I have been able to not only look at this from a theoretical point of view, as I'm doing a collaborative PhD, I've also been able to participate in a number of projects, so doing it more from a practical side, um, including uh, taking part in the Alan Turing Data Study Group um, and organising a machine learning club with my co-worker at the National Archives. Um, more details on this can be found in my application form. This brings me to what I'm currently looking at in my PhD project, which is around how we should be facilitating this computational access. So as I just highlighted, more and more, more people and archives are making material available as data. So for example, the Welcome API, um, but there seems to be this clear divide that we as the archiving sector should be providing the data and the community or the people outside of our community should be providing the tools to explore this data. Um, but what I'm wondering is if this is the right balance. Um, what I'm really interested in is to explore this relationship and this balance between providing the data, but also seeing if we can provide different applications and tools on top of this data to make it possible for users to explore the material outside of the traditional catalog. So now to go into a little bit of details of what I would like to do with this fellowship. As I've pointed out, there are a growing, there is a growing um, demand and a growing need for digital skills across the community. But currently a lot of these resources are quite fragmented. So one of the main things that I would like to do is finding a way of tying these together. So instead of me going out there and creating another resource on top of the resources that are already available, I would like to see what's out there and what's beneficial to the field and what's not. Um, another important point that I would like to be able to do is advocate for computational access. So more and more archives are seeing that it is a way of accessing material outside of the um, catalogue, but don't always see why it would be beneficial to them. So I would like to advocate this and make them understand why it's important. Um, and also a thing that we've really seen when I ran the machine learning club with my colleague is that it's not necessarily about making all um, archivists and other digital preservation practitioners into data scientists, but it's more about creating confidence 
um, like glam co-workers that are able to um, join these conversations and understand what computational message could mean for them. To go into a little bit more detail on what I exactly want to do with this fellowship, so um, I've been able to contact the Digital Preservation Coalition, the Archives and Records Association and the National Archives about me applying to this fellowship and they're all very excited about it and we had a talk about what ideas would be possible. Um, one of them seemed to be webinars, another one was workshops and another one was blog posts. One of the main things I want to stress here is that it's about me going into the community and helping them create resources instead of me doing that outside of the community. Thank you for listening.